Welcome to the big show, Keith. Hey, Michael. How are you doing? Thank you very much for having me. Oh, I'm glad to have you, man. Um, I want our audience to know right up front that during the course of this thing, I'm going to be talking quite a bit about Composer Catalog, which is software that Keith created years ago. Um, he's a whiz at organization. He's just built that way. So I think he had to build this to solve his own problem. And, and he came up with something that's incredible that I think is useful to all of our members. Um, so forgive me for plugging it, but I don't make a penny out of this. I never do. I never will. I'm plugging it because I love it and I remember should have it. So, um, any of you who have ever had more than a few dozen songs or instrumentals know that it gets really, really hard to keep track of alt mixes and cut downs, who you sent it to, which version they got, when they got it, all that kind of stuff. Um, well, Keith became that guy pretty quickly because um, he has a lot of material to keep track of. He's a computer programmer by day. He has a family. Um, he quickly figured out that he could work late at night and make some extra income making music for media. And he just did it with a vengeance, man. Uh, I, I don't know how much extra income he makes, but I know the general ballpark and it's a healthy ballpark to be in. And I think I'd like to see every taxi member be there and hopefully um, learning about organizing your stuff because it's not just about making great music. It's about being a professional and Composer yeah. Catalog allows you to be a better professional. So tell us how many songs or tracks you've created in the like 10 years or so that I've known you. I think we're probably around 1,500, maybe getting close to 2,000, something like that. Wow, that's healthy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and how many of those have been signed into libraries over the course of that 10 years? They're all signed. Yeah, they're all signed. Every one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have any free time. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. So how many catalogs is your stuff in? It's probably around 20, 25 around there. Wow. Yeah. That, that's incredible. I, I first started Taxi in the first two years. I just uh, nothing but recording. I, mean, I, I went nose to the grindstone on that one for the first two. And then uh, that helped build the bills pretty quick. Gotcha. Um, so tell everybody, I mean, th this is a shocking number, but I know what it is. They don't know how many shows, not just how many placements you've had, but how many shows has your music been in? Uh, I think we're, it's definitely 850. We're probably rounding the corner to 900. 900. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, pretty cool. It's very cool. Um, <laughs> so how did you keep track of that stuff before you started Composer Catalog or before you built it? I, well, for me, I started with an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, so I would have a couple columns. It would be like track title and maybe the date I submitted it to Pat uh, And then it's, it's the, it, the spreadsheet itself kind of expanded. You know, now I was getting them forward. So what date was it forwarded? Because I want to keep track of that. And then you know, fast forward, you have uh, sign, sign, like publishing deals, right? So I would start to get the publishing deals and then you have to keep track of all that information. So it just seemed like every once in a while, my spreadsheet would just keep on growing and growing with the, with the columns. And it got to a point where it's okay if you have you know, 20 tracks, but it got to the point where it was a little, it was getting a little crazy, you know, and you start dealing with the hundreds of tracks. So I needed to, to, you know, figure something else out for that. I personally am not a fan of Excel. Many of my friends love it, but I can't imagine, you know, after you've got like 50 or 100 pieces of music and you yeah. keep adding columns and everything, um, and, and it's not really relational, you know, you can't click on right. one thing and see other stuff. Um, yeah, so, I do have some friends that are Excel wizards, so take, you know, take nothing away from Excel. I'm just, I'm just not one of them. So. <laughs> right. That makes two of us. Um, all right. Well, you should definitely show the, the video or a still shot or something uh, yeah. after we do the interview. You know, you cut that stuff in just so people can see what your early Excel spreadsheet looked like and, <laughs> and why, you know, uh, why you had to build creative. Why do I keep calling it creative? Why you build Composer Catalog. Okay, so you had asked me how I kept track of uh, all my titles in the beginning. This is kind of just a rough example of how I started with Taxi. I would just have a track title and, and the date I sent it to Taxi, the forward date if it was forwarded, and the return date. 
But as I started getting further down the road with Taxi, I realized that some more columns had to be added. I started getting some track signs. So then you would see a column for signed, yes, no. And then when it was signed, the publisher name. So I, I needed some more information. The columns grew a little bit. And now, going more down the road, so I got some more columns. So maybe there's different types of deals, such as a non-exclusive versus an exclusive. And with that ex- non-exclusive, they did a retitle. So now I had to keep track of the alt title for Happy Place. They called it Guessing All the Time. So I wanted to make sure I knew their title as well as my title. And then as going more and more down the road, maybe that Happy Place was signed non-exclusively by this mailbox Money Music but now it's signed by another publisher called Force of Music, and they retitle it. So as you can see, this the columns keep on growing and growing, and now I'm doing some co-write situations. So here's some more columns. I got uh, the co-writer, their PRO, their PRO number, and the percentages. So it just seemed like the spreadsheet for me, the columns were growing and growing. And then when you're starting to deal with hundreds of tracks, maybe having to go back, you just weren't really... You know, I didn't have the time to go back and fill in the older track information. So it, the spreadsheet would have holes in it and it just was never complete. So uh, the obvious question is, when does somebody need it? At what stage of their career? Yeah, I think if you have, uh, if you're starting to build a catalog and, and I think you should have something, some organizational tool at the very beginning, because the last thing you want to do is you know, if you have, if you start getting deals, and then you pitch that track to, you know, a different publisher, and you just sign an exclusive on that on that track. You know, that's that's a big big no no. So, my answer would be, you want to stay organized, whether it's with composer catalog, Excel spreadsheet, something, whatever, uh, as soon as you start, because it's just going to get harder to get that back track in information into whatever system you're going to do, or just the willpower to go back and, you know, update everything. Because, you know, if you're on track 250, who wants to really take the time you know, to, to put all that stuff in? So me personally, I would just say, as soon as, you know, as soon as you start doing this, and, and this is going to be, you know, a, a path that you want to take, um, I would do something as soon as possible. You know? Now, if you're a person who does you know, writes a CD every couple of years or something like that, and you have maybe three CDs total, is, is Composer Catalog the right fit? Or no, you could do that with a spreadsheet. But if you're dealing with, you know, a good amount of tracks uh, or, and or, you know, you're, you want to kind of do this for a living or, or you know, uh, as a part-time gig, you want to make sure that you, that you don't make any missteps with pitching music. Uh, I want to let our viewers know I'm getting that audio glitch again. Uh, it, it's not horrible, but I just want everybody to know I'm aware of it, but I'm not going to open up my computer and fix it in the middle of an interview. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's something on the audio card in the computer because I had the problem earlier today. Anyway, so i got to tell you a great story. You mentioned that you don't want to send something that's already been signed, especially if it's an exclusive. So um, as you know, I'm friends with a lot of music library owners, and one of them uh, called me up one night. I think it was like a Sunday night. It was fairly late at night, and he calls me up. He goes, you would not believe what just happened. What? Said, I just got some music, a song, forwarded to me by taxi, and I already have this song signed exclusively in my catalog. So he, he was pretty pissed off at the writer, yeah. thinking, you know, this guy's out there pitching it all over the yeah. world. My guess is it's exactly what you said, which was the guy just wasn't organized yeah. and he had a lot of material and he forgot that the thing was signed. Right. That could yeah. get you into a lot of trouble yeah. and mess up a lot of relationships. So clearly yeah, you, don't, you, don't mean, you don't mean to do something that devious, you know, it's just that your organizational skills weren't, weren't maybe up to snuff and you, you send something out. So, but in the, at the end game, it's just a bad thing to do. It's a bad look yeah. for, for, you know, composer. <laughs> Uh, so give some examples of when composer catalog comes in handy. Well, I, I think once you start getting into, if you're a person that does um, non-exclusive deals and you start de- dealing with like retitling and stuff like that, you know, that was, uh, if you have a spreadsheet trying to figure that one out and you have the main track and then you have, you know, publisher A and their alt name or retitle and then you get signed to another one if you're, if you do that, you know, non-exclusive thing and they have publisher B with a different track. So if you ever want to go back and figure out, well, 
I, I see this on my PRO. It's this track, but I, this is not the name of my title, you know. So now you got to figure out which which one was that. I think um, Composer Catalog helps with it keeps track of all the alt titles and. So when you have a like non-exclusive retitle situation and you want to find the alt title, as long as you put that into the system, uh, you'll be okay and you can bring it up. So if I go to the search and I look up, let's say Happy, in this example. And I check the alt box. And what that does is it will also search the alt titles for this. If you have it unchecked, it will just search for the main titles. So I check the alt. It will go through. And you notice we were looking for happy, and it brings up fun looking back, right? So now if I go in and edit fun looking back, if I look under my publishers, I'll see that the alt title for this one is happy go lucky and fun start. So it picked up the alt title happy go lucky. So, um, it's it's little th little things like for me, there's an area for publishers and there's a section to put comments about that publisher or requirements, and I just like to fill that in with with the file requirements because uh, I never remember you know okay publisher A needs it how sixteen bit was it sixteen twenty four forty four forty eight right. or what you know so I just always like to pull it up and just you know cl click on it and get the information. But if I click on make you famous publisher you'll see there's a requirements comment section. So then it will tell me for my submissions, I could put anything in here. But right now, for an example, I have, you know, they need the full, the bed, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, sting. And here's the type of, of file format that they require. So it's, if I just, you know, can't remember at some point, I'll just fire up the, the program and just take a look to make sure I got the right requirements. There's, there's tons of, you know, uh, studio musicians you can keep track of, work for hire stuff. And there's, there's a lot of information in there that, I think, All right. Well, think, yeah. After we're done with this, and I send you this video, you should cut in some video yeah. of of how that looks and how it works, so I can search by style, um, genre, lyric, song, or instrumental, signed, unsigned, um, right. signed non-exclusively. Uh, what else can I search by? Anything. So, uh, my biggest example: if a publisher or, or a music supervisor calls and says, "I need something that sounds like the Foo Fighters," you know, that has predominantly rock guitar lead uh you know not signed obviously so now i always tell the users of composer catalog the more information you put in the better your search results would be so anything you put in searchable so in that case i had a song let's say i wrote that sounded like foo fighters i tagged it you know there's a space in composer catalog to uh like similar bands like alas and also like shows it would fit it would be a good fit for so if I tag this song as sounds like Foo Fighters and, and I and I in my instrument section tag electric, you know, guitar or rock guitar, uh, I could go into my search and, and just type in Foo Fighters and there's a section signed, unsigned, just click unsigned and then click on electric guitar, hit search, and that's gonna, you know, show me any tracks that I have that's not signed, sound like Foo Fighters. Uh, you know, so I think I have a video for that too, I'll show. But that is is probably the most powerful part of composer catalog is the search feature because like i said the more information you put in you can search on publisher and you know sign unsigned you can search on alt titles so it's there's all this information you can you know search on so this way if somebody calls you can get that answer uh, right away say a publisher or music supervisor uh, emailed or, or called and said i need a, tr a rock track uh featuring electric guitar that sounds like aerosmith uh, what I would do is I would open up the program, go into the search feature, and then under genre, I would pick rock, and is signed, I would say no, and then for all the tracks that I have in the system, I would I would have uh, what they, what, what similar bands would be like Alas, so I would select Aerosmith to see if I have anything in there, and lo and behold, I would have something here, it's not signed, so I could hit play. And to me, that, that could cut, sound like Aerosmith. So I would send that along to the publisher and see if we can get a deal. Because that's half the battle. When a publisher that, calls, it's a, timing, it's a timing thing, right? Absolutely. Could you imagine having to go through an Excel spreadsheet and find <laughs> that stuff? I mean, <laughs> impossible. And you're right. You know, again, like I said at the, at the top of the interview, that uh, it's not just about creating great music. You've got to be on time and you've got to send the right thing. You can't send something two hours late 
uh, right. because you couldn't find it. And then you sent the wrong version of it because you were right. disorganized. So yeah. it's yeah. it solves all those problems. Um, and I imagine that there are times that you work with uh, collaborators, maybe a vocalist or somebody plays a tuba on one of your tracks or whatever. Yeah. So can you track work for hire musicians? Yeah. And keep yeah. So there's a there's a section for session musicians. So you type in, you know, whatever your session musician is. And then you can also keep track of their work for hires if it's signed, not signed. If they need one, you know, if it's not required. Uh, so, yeah, there's a section for that, too. And also writers. You can do... Um, like uh, if you co-write with somebody, you can do splits with the percentages. Um, Great, that was so my next question. So yeah. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so a lot of times you get a, you get a co-publisher, you know, or a co-publishing deal. So you can do even co-publishing. So if two publishers split the deal or three, whatever you want, you know, you can do, say for instance, publisher A and publisher B for some reason sign this track or or they're both in it. You could split the the publishing percentages, and you could do a co-write situation too. That's cool. Um, what about various lengths? I mean, that's, that I know is an issue for a lot of people. Um, well, for instance, here, by the way, everybody should know that the ro official Road Rally theme music this year was actually um, written and produced by Keith. He's an awesome guitar player. And, and I called him up and I said, give me something very guitar driven. You know, it could be like Joe Walsh. It could be like ZZ Top. And he came up with this great track, which you guys will be hearing all week. Um, and I had him do like a, a sting version of it, which is just, bam, bam, um, you know, in a five second, a 10 second, a 15, a 20 with a five second count off. So we had time for a title card, a 30 second, a 60 second. So even keeping track of that stuff in an Excel yeah. spreadsheet would be yeah. impossible after a point. It'd be yeah. the world's biggest spreadsheet for one thing. <laughs> well, that's what was happening. It was like my columns just kept on going like, you know, column X, Y. So it was like, you know, yeah. Just, it, it, yeah. So with Composer Catalog, you can uh, you can link music files to that track. So say I had, for instance, the, the rally, let's call it, you know, Rally 2020. Um, say I had the main track, I, I could put that in, pull it in, and uh, designate that as the main track, and then pull in other ones as alt tracks so i have them all kind of grouped in as one so when i have a situation where there's multiple files for a track there could be a different uh, alt tracks a 30 second a sting what i like to do is I'll, I'll put them all in so if i edit this track here killing the suspense if i go to my music files you'll see that i have uh it's a main which has the asterisk and then i have a sting a 30 second and a bed so now when i go into the search and i look at my catalog i'll see this drop down here so I can hit killing the suspense and it'll show me that I have all these tied to it. So it's just a, a nice way to kind of group everything together so you can see everything in one shot. And the important thing is that, uh, you know, it's probably the biggest question I get. They're not actual, nothing goes in. It's just a pointing system. So it's on your system. So if you have tracks that you keep in C, whatever, temp drive, you know, directory, it, it points to that. You know, so that way it, it can play the system, play the play the file, and then you have an idea when you pull this Foo Fighters request up, you can actually play it, and then that way you know if, if it's going to fit that pitch or anything. Um, I thought I'd insert a quick video here to show you the information that can be captured in Composer Catalog. So right here, we'd be adding a new track, and this would be the General Information tab, and this would be your track title, and your track type, song or instrumental. This would be your genre, which is pre-populated, or you can add your own new genre. Uh, is it registered with your PRO? Yes or no. Is it signed? Yes or no. The key of the track, track length, and the BPM. And finally, we have the track status. So where are you with the track? Is it completed? So there's different stages that you can put in there. In the writer section, this is where you'd put in the writers of the track. So if you had one, you could just put in music and lyrics, Let's just say we'll do a 50% split. So I add a writer here, and then I'll add another writer who did the lyrics, and that's 50%. So that's a co-writer situation. Same thing with the publishers. You can do a single publisher deal or a co-publishing deal. So we'll just do a single publisher for now, make you famous. If they have an alternate track title due to a non-exclusive, signed as, uh, reversion date if there is one, 
um, in the contract that you know of and the comment section. So we'll just do this real quick. The only thing we need is exclusive. So then exclusive under Make You Famous. So session musicians, same deal. So if you had a person play, uh, let's just say, guitar and the work for higher status, we'll say it's not required, add session musician, so that's in there. If it's a song, then you can uh, paste, cut and c copy paste your lyrics in here. Comment section, uh, put any comments, so you could put a you know, forwarded, forward from taxi on 4 to 2020, something like that. Uh, your metadata, this is where you put a track description describing the track, the different moods of your track, and if you didn't have one, you can add one here in our new mood. It's keywords. We all love keywords. We'll put them in there. Uh, the instruments that were used in the track. So, again, it's pre-populated with a bunch of instruments. And if you don't have one, then we can just add it there. Uh, TV shows that fit the feel of the track. Sometimes, you know, you'll have a, um, a pitch for a certain type of TV show or you know that it will fit something, let's say, uh, you know, Kardashian show you know, so you'd put that in there uh, bands that sound similar so this is great for the year Allah so if you put in uh, you know sounds like Goo Goo Dolls or Foo Fighters right and this is your PRO information a registration number and the date it was registered and this would be your music file so any files that you would have linked um, so you'd put in here music let's see what comes up and then I could say let's take Southern Muscles, I'll play it. All right, we'll add that in, and we'll, it's, it's gonna ask, is this the main track? Yes, it is. And then if I had any alternate tracks, stems, I could also link them in there too. And then when I'm done, I would just hit save, and that track would then be in here. So can you keep track of like when you make a, a submission to Taxi that you've made the submission and yeah. um, if it was forwarded or returned or, you know, kind of the status of that as well? That is a great question. I get that question a lot. And um, so I had to think about that one because I didn't want to make Taxi, I didn't want to make Composer Catalog Taxi centric because if someone's not a part of Taxi, which they should be, but if they're not a part of Taxi, um, then, you know, it, it, they'll be like, what's this? forward to the taxi so yeah. i had to think about it for a while because I, I think it is an important thing to keep track of uh so in the next update um that i'm putting out there you're going to be able to make custom track statuses so mm. right now there's a bunch of different track statuses like track complete uh, uh you know needs to be revised you know, needs to be mastered needs to be mixed so all these different versions of, of you know options and what what status your tracks on so now uh, it's going to be, you can type in your own. So you could type in forwarded to taxi as a status or submitted to taxi. But until that point, um, there's a comment section that I feel is really powerful in the program because, and a lot of people just kind of gloss over it, but that whole, it's just free text, but you can search on that. So if I go to Muscle Power, I'm going to edit the track. You'll see in the comment section, there's sent to taxi on 424-2020. Now, this comment section, you can put any text in there, and it's all searchable. So you could put sent to taxi on 424 or taxi forwarded on this date. And then what you could do is go to the search area and just put in taxi under the comment section. And what this will do is it will bring up any record that has the word taxi in the comment section. So you can see there's a group there. And I could just export the template, pick uh, track title and comments, and click on export. And what's will come out is a CSV file that has all my tracks and as you can see every single one of these has the word taxi in it. So now I could even be more specific and, and in my search put sent taxi or taxi forward and just get the sends or the forwards. But that's a way to, to get a list of everything that you've done uh, with submissions and forwards. Now going forward I'm going to make a free update down the road. Let's see if I go to tracks and a new track. Under this track status, you're going to have the ability to make custom track statuses that you create. So you could also create a taxi submitted or submitted to taxi or uh, taxi forwarded. So then you could create that as a track status. And that would be a, an additional way to keep track of your submissions and forwards. But in that comment section, if you just put in submitted to taxi on April 24th, 2020, 
So now in that search feature, all you have to do is really put in taxi or taxi submitted something, you know, to pull in that comment section. You could have a list of everything that you submitted, you know, as far as that. So it's 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 a way to get around it. But in the next free update, I'm going to have custom track statuses. So you can search anything that's in that comment box. You could make yeah. a note that, you know, more cowbell, I mean, right. it, yeah. It, yeah. virtually anything and it will yeah. show up. And I'm guessing it's not like... Um, case sensitive or anything like no, that no, even no. if you get most of the words spelled right it's going to show yeah, so no. and then then if you had codes yourself like if you were going to pitch it to, to a publisher or, or something like that you could do the same thing you know um can you also list the instrumentation for each track so let's say yeah. that you've got a basic track that's bass drums uh, electric guitar um and then you know you do alt versions so you can break out the different instruments as yeah. well yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to try and stump you on this one. Um, can you, <laughs> can you, can, can I you, make French toast? <laughs> <laughs> well, damn it. Then fire it. Um, how about moods? Because that's something that comes in really handy. If a publisher reaches out to you and obviously with you having relationships with 20 to 25 different publishers, I'm sure you get emails from them saying, you know, I need something that's like a, a sad acoustic guitar song. So can you just simply search sad or whatever other moods yeah. are? Well. Yeah, so you can go go about it a couple different ways. You have the mood section, which which are a bunch of different moods that are like check boxes. So you could do that. Uh, or there's also keywords. A lot of times we, uh, us composers love keywords, right? So I got to put the keywords in. Uh, you could search on keywords or you could search on a, a list of moods. Uh, there's also a track description, so you could search on track description. So, and like I said, the, the more information you put into the record, the better, the more robust your search results could be. You know, it's like the only requirements to put a track in right now are your track title, the genre, and the track type, whether it's a song or instrumental. That's all you really need to put in the system, but right. you're not going to get squat back when you want to search on something, right? So the more you put in, the better your search results are going to be. So you can pretty much pull anything that you put into the system. So the status of the track currently, uh, you can search on any of the writers you have in the system or the publishers, any session musicians that you have uh, attached to a track, any sort of instruments that you have checked off, you can put in there. Uh, the track type. So if you just want to pull up songs or instrumentals, you could do that. The genre uh, of the track, uh, if it's registered or not with your PRO, very important one is it signed right so you, you just want to pull the unsigned tracks you can get it there uh, keywords so if you have any sort of keyword we all love keywords right so we can put them in there and then pull up on the keywords how that track is signed if it's exclusive non or a work for hire the moods so you can check off a couple different moods and search on that uh similar bands so like the allies that you would get um so if you want to have something like for an example sounding like aerosmith you could pull up the tracks that you have flagged that sound like Aerosmith. Uh, TV shows. So we all have, um, you know, uh, our tracks can be sounding perfect for a certain TV show. So I like to put them in there. So, you know, if someone says I need something for television show A, I can, I can take a search and see if I have anything tagged for that. Uh, here's the track title. And I can search specifically for a title or any word in that title. And if I check this box it's going to look for all the alt titles and the non-exclusive -exc uh, deals uh, track description lyrics and comments so as you can see it's pretty powerful as far as everything that you can search and grab and so do you have like a predetermined list of, of moods or, or genres and stuff because i find that a lot of musicians in the moment can't really appropriately say this is the kind of mood or this is the the genre necessarily so do you have pull downs where it's kind of like oh that's the one right it's just happy or sad that's the only no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> no i do have a pretty populated list of moods uh, instruments um and genres but all three of them you can also add add other ones like you know whatever if i missed accordion I could type in accordion and add that in there into my list. So now going forward, I'll have that into my list of instruments or moods or genres. That's if you could spell accordion. That's one of those words that I never, ever spell yeah. right. <laughs> yes. Oh, at the end, right? <laughs> right. Accordion. Yeah. Yeah. Accordion. Um, 
<laughs> so I also made a note. Can you do stuff like, uh, so let's say you tag it with birthday party or chase scene. Obviously you can do that. Can you like double tag a chase scene with rock guitar? So if you want to search yeah. for chase scenes that are rock guitar based, boom, there they are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So far, so good. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, this was something cool that, uh, you mentioned in a phone call or something not that long ago to me, and you said that um, you can create a company profile, which right. I thought was a great idea because that way, here's a problem we used to have at Taxi. We had a couple or several people at the office entering company profiles for the listing companies. And one person might use the full name uh, right. yeah. another yeah, person yeah. might just say, you know, like Bob at ABC music. Right. Uh, yeah. and there were all these, so we would find, you know, we keep track of everything we send off to these companies, but we had to really search hard when we had to go back and dig something out because not everybody entered the company the same way yeah. you put in autofill. So once you do that company's stuff, whether it's the company name, the contact yeah. person, the address, the email, all that stuff it can autofill all future things that are right. related to that company. So it's, uh, they're called track profiles. And what that does is, so it's not just, I guess, a publisher, but you could write pretty much anything. So you could pre-populate your writers. So if I'm, if I'm always writing for publisher A, I'm going to write, let's say, um, my, my writer name, obviously my percentage is 100% if I'm doing it all, the publisher, publisher the contract type non-exclusive exclusive the you know the percentages and then even like if i was doing a blues album i could fill in the genre as blues um so anything that i could put in the composer catalog i can create this profile so now i could link it if i wanted to use it to create a new track now i could say okay use that track profile and it's going to pre-populate everything uh, that I put in, right wow so that's that's kind of cool uh, you know because a lot of people it, it saves a lot of typing and no nobody wants to type <laughs> right so with the last free update to composer catalog i added a feature called track profiles and this this feature allows you to say you're always sending a bunch of tracks to publisher a or you just finished uh, a 20 track album for publisher b and you're putting all these tracks in the system well a lot of uh, the information is going to be the same it's going to be repetitive so what you could do is you can create a track profile with all that information pre-populated. So for this example, you can see Make You Famous Profile. Um, the profile name is Make You Famous Profile. And I have it set up where it's an instrumental. Let's just say I finished a blues album. So I, I selected the genre as blues. And all this different information is pre-populated. So I, I made a writer say my name's Bill Worth. And I put all that information in. And since this is a Make You Famous Profile, my publishers make you famous. So it has all that information. I could go even in more detail if I wanted to. But just to give you an example, uh, if I now go to create a new track, because I have used track profiles selected up here and the Make You Famous profile, you can see all that information is now pre-populated. So the genre is blues, just like we had it. It's signed as yes. If I go to my writers, it's Bill Worth. The publishers is Make You Famous right here. So all that information is pre-populated. So normally you would have to put that in, in but this will save you time down the road. And we all love saving time. Uh, wow, you were pretty nerdy when you built this, man. <laughs> yeah, it got crazy. It really did because I, and that was actually a, a free update because I, I, what happens is I find myself wanting some some feature. And I'm like, oh, it'd be cool if I did this because I would, I would save on typing. And so what will happen is I'll develop it and then, then I'll push out an update you know, free to the users. And, and uh, you know, so everyone kind of wins, I think, at that point. Um, before you invented Composer Catalog and you're still using the spreadsheet, do you have any like nightmare scenarios where somebody reached out to you and, you know, you hadn't been as responsible as you needed to, or yeah, it was in I, column I really, Z? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, darn it, column E was invisible. No, I really, I thank, you know, thankfully I haven't had a situation like that, but it was just getting nuts. Like I couldn't, like I was, you know, it just, I just didn't feel like I was in control, you know, with my spreadsheet, you know, because it was just, I know that I would get kind of lackadaisical. I wouldn't put stuff in and then I'd be like, Ooh, you know, I should put that in. And then, yeah, but I got all these comms I got to fill out and I just got crazy. So 
you know. Uh, but thankfully, you know, knock on wood, everything worked out. I would imagine that it's really hard. Uh, you know, you put your daughter to bed, you say goodnight to your wife, she crawls into bed with a good book or an episode on HGTV, and you go trudging down to the basement because you know that you've got a, a deadline to meet for something. Yeah. And you end up working until one or two o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and now you've you know you've done the the mix, you've done the alt mixes, any cut downs, all that stuff, and then in that moment you have to force yourself to type <laughs> yeah. type stuff in because if you don't do it, then yeah, it'll never happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I I think it's really cool that you built that. Uh, what do you call it again? It's called track profiles. Track so it's profiles. a profile. Yeah. So it's not right. necessarily a publisher. It could be anything for that track. So like I said, if I just if I was doing a, a blues album for a publisher, I would kind of pre-fill all that information in and then that way it will be done. And then for the next update, I'm going to be putting out, you're, you're going to be able to import tracks, but then tell it to use a track profile when you're importing. So um, uh -huh. you'll be, yeah, you'll be able to save a lot of time with, with that stuff. So. Um going away from organizational stuff for a moment, let's just talk about music. <laughs> uh, Keith happens to be a great guitar player. Uh, what are your favorite types? Uh, what's your favorite genre to work in? Uh, I would have to go blues, rock. You know, that would have to be my favorite. Like, I really like, I think we've talked about this, really diving into the tones yeah. as far as what, what people, what the requests are. I think that's pretty cool cool to do like uh i know you're talking about you want to sound like zz top and so i was kind of looking at what billy gibbons used at that genre or that those songs that you referenced you know what the, exactly did it use and i actually had those amps on my kemper profiler so i was able to pull it up and you know but i i've had calls where you know we need something that sounds like i don't know 60s and then 70s so they were doing some sort of anthology series in 80 so that was in my glory at that point because i was able to get you know john bonham type drums and and for wow. you know zeppelin stuff so it was cool but that's that's what i like blues and rock um, but I'm, I'm doing a little bit of everything to be honest with you do you also play keyboards i've never asked you. well there, yeah. there's a keyboard behind yeah. you so i guess the answer yeah. is yes yeah yeah so i usually uh, I play you know everything sing every once in a while too so <laughs> um what is the most commonly licensed genre for you is there such a thing there is it's probably on the rock side uh, i know i'm i was doing real well with sports um sports games i, I guess as far as airing music because I, I get a lot on my uh, pro sheet for that uh who knows after covid but but i was doing well <laughs> at that point so. <laughs> but it's like the, it's it's the um you know, blues rock genre that, that does well, but it, I'll do even like country stuff or, you know, we, we would joke around. I, I think some stuff on HGTV, the acoustic, uh, so right. I'll, I'll do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. There's a show on HGTV. It's called small town. I think my wife watches it when I come upstairs at night to crawl into bed. She's always watching that. And I've commented, I'm not exaggerating to say like a hundred times, to her, when I hear the stuff that they've got on that show, um, it, it's like acoustic guitar doing rock. And, yeah. and I'm sure that I've heard stuff of yours on there because, I mean, I kind of know your style after knowing you mm -hmm. all these years. And, and, you know, I'll be dozing off in bed and she's <laughs> got her eyes glued to the TV to see what the, you know, the backsplash is going to look like. And I'll go, I'll bet you anything, that's a Keith LeBrant track. <laughs> Did you time yeah. it? How long did it play for? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. What's your longest? Speaking of which, what's the longest placement you've probably I've had? I've had actually with? full songs played. Um, wow. The one. Yeah, it was amazing. Like uh, uh, young, uh, I think the Young and the Restless played a full song, and I just had something pulled down on a uh, tune set that I did. It was like two minutes and forty seconds, and I think it was pretty much you know the song. So yeah, I've had a couple that were that were pretty long like that. So Barry Dvorzon, who's the guy that invented Master Writer and also a hit songwriter with an incredible six decade long career, he actually wrote a song that got retitled as Nadia's theme and they use it on The Young and the Restless as a theme song. 
Uh, so could you imagine what his quarterly statements must look wow. like? I mean, that's on five days a week on a broadcast network. Oh, yeah, that, one could be so lucky on that one. That's good. <laughs> and he wrote the theme to Shaft. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, could you imagine? Wow. <laughs> anyway, well, I'm fresh out of questions, um, unless there's anything that I overlook that you want to talk about. I also want to leave you some time so you can cut in the, the videos. Yeah, of the they were good. Like I said, like it, this, I, I have an open trial. So the only, the only limitation is the five track maximum, but I know that different composers have different workflows. So I'm not saying that this is, this would be the be all end all. Like it could work for some and not others. And, and I'm good with that. You know, this worked for me and ho hopefully it'll work for you. Um, I'm working on an online version, which is going to be like, uh, you know, in the cloud. Um, so it just started develop some ideas with that one. And uh, if, if you don't mind i'll probably throw out some sort of discount for taxi members for a couple days if, if they're interested we can do i'm sure they'll be interested um yeah. what does it cost with that what's the normal like uh list price uh 79 dollars i think yeah i think cheap. 79 dollars cheap put me on the you, spot there yeah you think it's 79 bucks <laughs> dude you built it um uh, well i mean that's that already sounds like it's well worth it because you know what if you just blow one piece of music that you don't get to the right yeah. the right piece of music to the right person at right. the right time it's going to cost you more than 79 bucks yeah. um, and true. i also want everybody to know before i say goodbye to you that when i first called keith and said look i want you to do a thing about composer catalog for the rally he goes yeah i don't know he was like i don't want everybody to think it's a big sales pitch well you know me um I, i've never made a penny like i said at the top of the show i never will make a penny i wouldn't take a penny if he offered i might call him up and ask him to do a guitar piece for me for the road rally but um, <laughs> I, I just i'm all about helping our members become professional and the music yeah. side is you have to have the music first, but you also have to have these other ducks in a row. And I think Composer yeah. Catalog is a great tool for that. So thank you for saying yes. I know it probably made you squirm a little bit, but you know, <laughs> hey, you should be proud of it, dude. It's, yeah. uh, I haven't looked at it. You know, you, you gave me a version of it years ago, I think right after it first came out. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought it was very comprehensive then. And I, how many years has it been on the market now? Now you put me on the spot. Uh, it's like five years. Yeah, maybe more than that. But the nice thing is, it's it's constantly evolving. So right, the, so the version you have is probably old, you know. So I've added some more things to it, and you know, it's it's nice because I, I think we as composers probably aren't that organized. Well, I shouldn't say all of us, but I know I'm not. You know, so anything to help, right? Anything to help. Absolutely. Well, thanks for doing this, and uh, I look forward to seeing the video examples that you cut in. Cool. See Thank you next you so year. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> see you at the 2021 Road Rally when we can actually see each other in person. Let's do that. All right, man. All right, take care. So real quick, if you feel that this software can help keep you organized, I set up a special page. If you go to www.composercatalog.com forward slash rally, uh, you'll see the special page set up for Taxi Rally members. Uh, you can pick the Windows or Mac version. And I set up a special discount for the Taxi Rally 2020. So enjoy.